Today I'm going to show you how to go from using a simple circle jig for making your rainbow stackers to a system that I came up with that allows you to clamp pieces so you can get the offset and it's very simple to use and you can create them very quickly with something like this. Just to show you, you can do anywhere from a 3 inch rainbow stacker down to quarter inch semicircles. My name's Casey, and this is Yamaker. Let's get going. All right, so we're here in Fusion 360. I'm gonna start out by drawing the template for the pivot points that are on the base that connects to the bandsaw. Um, so, so I like to work top down. So I'm gonna click on the top here, and I'm going to click L, and that's gonna put us into a drawing mode. So I'm gonna click the surface here. I'm gonna base everything off of the center point here, and that tells me like where I need the blade and all that kind of stuff. So the longest cut is gonna be 180 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna come over here and do a construction line. And I'm doing that because that gives us a dotted line versus a solid line. And I'm just gonna draw a short little rectangle around this. And in the width, I'm not worried about the width so much. I'm more worried about the height right now, which is 180. So we can see we have this yellow dotted line. And I can zoom out and I can see the whole thing. So what this does is when I pivot on this point, this will give me a 180 millimeter radius circle if I were to cut all the way around here. So I'm going to do... So I'm going to actually come up to the top here. I'm going to draw and simulate where the blade would be. So I'm going to do a rectangle. And my blade is only about, oh, what is that? It's pretty small. It's only maybe two millimeters in thick thickness. Um, but I do want to change that so it's not a construction line. I want it to be a solid line for right now. So I'm going to simulate, like, this is the path where the blade will come in. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that there. I want the blade to stop on the center line as well. So that's why I stopped the block right here. But this will give me a good kind of target when I'm cutting in into the template on where I need that to be so I get my circles correct. So... What I need to do now is account for each of the other circles leading up, up to this or down. A couple different ways I could do that. Um, I could go through and draw a bunch of arcs, get all my circles, and that would tell me where each one would fall. Or I can just measure because I know what if I do 180 and I actually want to subtract two millimeters to give me a little bit of room for the blade cutting so when it What's left over, I want to be as close to one centimeter thick for the. If I were to do it exactly a centimeter, everything would end up being like closer to like nine millimeters. Not a big deal, but I still want to try and keep them at least a full 10 millimeters. So I'm kind of going to work backwards. So this is the longest one, and our shortest one is going to be up here somewhere. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back and turn my tool on. And I'm just actually going to start drawing a bunch of rectangles. And I'm going to do it off the center point here. So if I come down, the first one I need is a 48 millimeter height. And it, I'm not so worried about the width right now, so I can just drop that there. And then this is the nut easy part after this point. Every one should be 12, mil or 12 millimeters. And when I get to the end, it should match up to the bottom right here. So I'm just going to come in, select that point, type in 12 millimeter, hit enter. Um, hit R for rectangle, click where this bottom corner is, come out, 12 millimeter again. I'm just going to repeat this until I have reached the bottom. So the last one, 
12. There we go. So now on each one of these points is where I want to draw my circle. So I'm going to start at the end here. I'm going to hit C, which gives me a center diameter circle. Come over here and see that. See how this is a shortcut key for it? If it doesn't have one there, it doesn't have a shortcut. So I'm going to hit click on that, hit C, select this bottom one. And this, I want to be a quarter inch. Um, so if you don't know what the measurement, the uh, what the millimeter measurement is for a quarter inch, you can type in just 0 0.25, the double quote, and hit enter, and that'll actually tell you it's 6.35. So I'm going to repeat that back up until I get to this one that's 48 millimeters from where the cutting blade will be. So again, C, center point, 6.35, enter. Oh, I made a mistake. I didn't change, I wanna change these back to non-construction lines. I want these to be, to persist. So all I can do is I'll just hit, hit escape if I have the circle icon showing that I'm gonna draw a circle. So I hit escape, I come down and I select that circle, and then I can turn the construction lines off. I'm gonna do that for this one as well, turn the construction line off. So now we're not doing construction lines, but I clicked off, it turned it back on. So I'm gonna turn that off one more time, hit C, and then 6.35, enter. So this is giving me the pivot points for my different sections of the rainbow. So I'll just fast forward through this, so, all right, and this is our last one, 6.35. So now, if I were to just take this and put it on the board, I can make circles all day long. But this will give us a full circle. We don't want for us full, quite a full circle. They're usually about a centimeter off center of the radius. Um, what else do we want for the, the base? I want guides on either side because I'm gonna actually have a bottom piece that pivots and that gets clipped to the top. So let's go ahead and I want that to be, I want that to match up so it goes right up to the blade. So when I'm cutting that last final piece, it actually will act kind of like a zero clearance. So that's gonna need to be 48 on either side so I'm going to do a rectangle. Let's give myself an idea here. So we're going to do 48 and let's do 48 for a square. And then we'll do a rectangle on the other side and do the same thing. 48, 48. Okay. So I'm going to have a channel on either side. So I'm going to draw another rectangle. Go to there. Just kind of hover over that line and it'll kind of, it'll help to lock. And then I want that, there we go. You can see that green line. And I want that to come just shy of the blade. Okay. So what we were gonna do and draw a bigger rectangle to kind of simulate the whole base plate. So here's our whole plate, right? Inside of here, I want this to be channeled out. That way I can take my pivot, what's gonna be the pivot point, and it'll fit in there and kind of slide. It's gonna, I think that'll help to make it a little bit easier to find each spot, because I'll just pick it up a little bit, move it forward till it finds the next hole, and it'll drop into that hole. I make my cut, remove the piece, and rinse and repeat pick up move forward a little bit till it drops make my cut there we go that'll keep it lined it up by having the edges on the side and then when i do get to that last one it'll have that so we shouldn't get a bunch of tear out so i'm going to draw another just 10 centimeter or 10 millimeter kind of piece. And then what that would do is as it's cutting each section, it doesn't get a bunch of tear out on the bottom. 
and I'll just make our job e easier in the long run. So I want to measure, I'm gonna use that by the inspect tool here. So from that circle to what this line is now is 40 millimeters, which is fine. So I'm gonna, just so I can remember that, I'm gonna go, I want it as a separate piece for this next part that we start working on. So we finish the sketch, just remember 40, and go up to create, create sketch. Click on that same plane. So now we have two sketches. So for this one, I want a 40 millimeter radius or four centimeter radius. Um, I am actually, we'll finish that one really quick so I can come back and edit this sketch. I'm gonna hit T because I don't want this outside box there any longer. I'm actually only concerned with the these measurements here. As you can see, I can't see that other drawing right now because I'm editing this one. So it'll still be there when we get back. I'm actually going to bring in these lines to that area, the back side. I'm not worried about, but I just want to kind of make it so it's a little bit easier for lining up. So we'll do a rectangle and 40 there. And 40 there. So that'll give that as I slide it forward, it'll lock that in place. I can even bring, if I double click on that, or no, we don't want that one. I can even bring, we're gonna erase that line, that line, that line, that line, that line, that line. That line. And that line, draw a new rectangle at 40 to 80 and 40 down. There we go. So there's our new area that we need to have. So from this line down, anything outside or in this area actually as well is gonna be at the same level as our pivot point. So we just finish that sketch. Now we're back to this one. So I'm gonna edit this one now we have our 40 uh, millimeter circle and I want off the center point I want that to have a rectangle around it that will be at least one centimeter off the center point so that one edit okay so we know we have our circle here, which is 6.35. That's where we're going to be the pin goes. Then we're going to do a rectangle. But I want to do a center rectangle. So I'm going to bring that out. And I want that to be 10 by 10 for right now. Okay. And I actually want this top edge piece here do a line L, bring that all the way out to the edge. Same with this side, to the, ed to the edge, okay. So we've got a circle, we got, what's our base? We got one pivot point here. Um, the back piece, which is going to be used as the base stop. So we're going to switch to a circle, not a construction point, and that's going to also going to be 6.35 quarter by 20. So that would mean it would fit, the bolt is going to fit right in here. I'm going to actually need to use another piece that will lock that into place. But that should give me plenty of room to create the spots for the bolts are gonna lock these into place and make it adjustable as well. Okay.
Okay, so that gives me a good layout for where those are going to be. I'll be able to put that, use that as a template on the top. So I think we're finished with that sketch. Now we need a front view of that sketch. So we know the full circle is 40 millimeters across. So I'm going to draw, start a new sketch. Go back, select that surface. I'm going to do this one right here. So I'm going to do a rectangle, 85 by 40. There we go. So now I have a nice center line I can work off of. And two full squares is going to be, should be one, one centimeter. I don't want the channels all the way down, so we'll do a rectangle. So I'm just gonna use my construction lines real quick. Draw uh, kind of a rectangle. So we've got the 10, 10. So now we know if I go and turn construction lines back off, start there, go there. And we are 85, so let's go down 40. Okay. So that'll give us 40 plus because we can go a little bit higher, but I don't want to go too low if I need the bolts to go down. Yeah, we can't do that. I'm going to change that to 50. And I changed that after I do it. I just double clicked on the dimension here and that expanded it down. And that'll just give us a channel to lock, kind of help to keep the arm in place. And then we have our arms. And that's going to be actually kind of easy. There's two of them that we're going to need to do. So let me finish the sketch. Because we're going to want one that has a longer arm that reaches to the bottom. But then we also want one that's going to have a short arm so that we, we can get the most height out of this as well. Another sketch. And these the two of them that we're going to do here, I'm just going to put into one drawing. They should be small enough that we can fit multiple onto one page. Same as actually these ones. We should be able to put both of those on one page. So new sketch, select the top down, and do rectangle again. So the first one we know needs to be from here to there. Rectangle, snap there, to there. So that's 35 by, let's do 30. That's well point. So that would give us all the way to the top to the bottom. And then let's do a centimeter square off of the top here. That's going to be right. There. So if we were to be looking at the piece from the front, that's how it's going to look. But if we look at it from the side, so we're going to do that that to there, right? And then our arm on top needs to be from here and a little to the back right in this area right here. So that one is, although we had 40 plus one, so it's 50 centimeters long from this point. So we'll just do that and we'll do 10 millimeters by 50 millimeters. And then we'll just do a rectangle to fill that in and clear out these lines here. So now, uh, I hope you can see kind of the shape I'm going for. 
I'm going to do another one that would basically is just going to be a one centimeter square by 50 centimeters or 50 millimeters sorry just basically a shaft so it's going to be that and then when you look at it from the front it's that and that way if I were to take that and put that on there we immediately start out with this gap of what is it one two three 35 millimeters high and then that goes up there so it cuts out 35 oh, there's the, the writing 35 cuts out 35 millimeters difference so this one at, at its peak up at the top here is going to be right about where this one starts it should be right about where this one starts so i think i have the, all the sketches i need to be able to create my templates now so now we're going to go from design to drawing and we're going to do from design we're actually going to do this a couple times so we, it's going to prompt us to save our project so i'm going to put the rainbow stacker jig and we're going to change our cap locks rainbow stacker jig hit save that doesn't yeah i can go in kids toys save that i am going to select 297 yeah Let's see what this one looks like there we go and we're going to do from the top view and just click in the middle just to create your base view and then we're going to go to projected view that's going to place everything on here and as you can see not everything is going to fit what does fit though well let's find out we're going to turn off our first sketch and that all fits awesome I can get rid of select that and hit delete gets rid of that select this hit delete gets rid of that everything's at a one-to-one -one scale so that gets us our templates for the, the arm the center the pivot bottom pivot it needs to be a circle of that size I'll show you another way we can make the circles now we're gonna have to cut this out that size okay if we had the circle going all the way up to the blade, that would be pretty easy, but we're going to be short of the blade a little bit. And then we got our two arms that are going to end up locking, being our clamp. Okay. So I'm going to go to output. And we're going to output this as a PDF. All sheets. I'm going to have that so it opens it and hit OK. Um, and this is going to be... Rainbow Jig version 2. Um, pivot clamp parts. Pivot clamp parts. Go ahead and save that. And that opened up here. We have that, so we want to print that and go file, print, and we want actual size, and that looks like that will be good. Don't have to do any fun tweaking, I don't have to go into poster mode and tell it to do one page or anything like that. I can leave that as is, look good, so I'm going to go ahead and print that. And just minimize that for now. And then we can do the exact reverse. Turn those off. Turn that on. But it doesn't fit. So we want to rotate that object. 
and we can select the transform. So we just told it to rotate 90 degrees. And then we're going to take that transform. Transform is the way to tell it you're going to move. So we're going to move that into the center of our page. Oops. There we go. Hit OK. And then we're going to output again. All sheets. OK. And I'm going to select this one. And then this is going to be pivot. Ah. And call that pivot points. We're going to go ahead and save that. Okay, and there's that template. And we'll go to File, Print. And that all fits on a single page. So again, we don't have to do anything. I want actual size. And I'm going to go ahead and print. All right, time to go get this, those from the printer and we'll be heading out to the shop and start working on this. All right, mm, see you out in the shop. All right, well, we're back out here in the shop and I've got the printouts that I did and I noticed some, a couple things that were wrong with it and I have went and fixed those. So I'm gonna show you the original items or the original prints that I did here first. One is actually just fine. I just made a tweak to it and I'll show you in a second. The other one, I, I messed up. But everything I did was correct, just my dimensions were wrong. So this is the original sheet. And if I need to put it up on the thing, I will. This one's okay. So this is the layout for the holes. So we're good there for the one edition which is not changing anything it just is going to help in the long run and then here's a sheet layout for the clamp mechanism well when i did these this was 40 millimeters radius circle so an eight or 45 radius so an 80 90 almost 90 diameter well, when I did the circle here, I did it at 40. And it's kind of hard to see, but if we take the two and line them up, big difference. The circle is way too small. So let me grab the other ones. Give me just a second. So here's the new layout. And what I've done, so put it up this way. It goes up here at the top, and then these are all the holes. I actually just made crosses on all each of the holes. That way I know when I do the punch, I know I get it in the right spot. Just it's a, to help that out. But I increased the size on all the additional pieces, and I hope these are showing up. They look like they're a little bit washed out. I'm going to turn my light down just a little bit. There we go. Looks like they're doing okay. Uh, and again, if they don't, I'll pop, pop up a screenshot of them. But these ones are a lot bigger, like twice the size actually. So this should be what, what's good. So the first thing I need to do is find a board that's gonna fit well enough on my bandsaw to get that to fit. So I will be back in a minute for you. It'll be right about now. All right, so I found my board. I'm gonna use this one as the base. This is what's gonna be sitting directly on the bandsaw. And then I have, this is actually gonna sit in the channel to keep everything lined up. I don't remember what kind of wood this is. I wanna say teak, maybe. The other one is just a Baltic birch ply that's been finished uh, for like doing, I don't remember, it's like melamine or something like that. And then I've got some pine, uh, select pine from your local box store. And I'm going to use that for creating the base for the clamp and the rails and the surrounding pieces on top of that. 
Um, I wanted to use that, but it wasn't quite wide enough for what I wanted to do to make sure I get everything covered. So that's where that's at. So let me move over to the bandsaw and we'll start setting stuff up over there. All right, so we're over here at the bandsaw. I cut out the template for the whole layout. So I need to glue this down. So like I've said a couple posts before, I like to use the purple uh, almost glue stick. Uh, washes off nice and easy and it works very well. So I'm gonna take this and actually I'm gonna try and get it, just eyeball it in the middle. I'm gonna use a line that it's already been cut as kind of a edge line. And then that way, when I come up, since this, I know this line is straight, this will be nice and straight as well. So we're just gonna apply glue on the back side. I'm gonna do kind of the corners. And I'm not even doing like a lot of it. Get the corners here, do that. I am gonna do down the holes in the middle though. I want those to stay in place when I'm doing that. And maybe a dab there and a dab there. So put the glue away. Flip that over and this be good. Um, okay. So now I'm going to get a center punch tool. So I've got my center punch tool here and I'm just going to punch in the center of these, what is it, 12, 13 circles here. Just so that when I go to drill these out, That'll be nice and easy. Let's go punch. And this will just help to make sure that when I line up the bit, that it's gonna stay in those spots. So you could try and freehand it, or free, free eye it, I guess, whatever. Um, I just like to do it this way, just to be a little bit more on the safe side. We'll be using a quarter inch drill bit so they don't tend to wander as much as some of the smaller ones. But again, rather be safe than sorry. So this is the placement. We want the blade to be right next to here. So when I do that, I'm gonna use my micrometer, or not micrometer, but my um, calipers. So I've got my calipers. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna set my fence so that when I make this cut, I get it right there. So what I wanna do is measure the distance from the edge to there. Helps if I turn this on. Zero that out. I'm just using my finger to kind of to feel some of the for flush. A lot of times, if it's right next to it, your finger is the best thing to tell if that's flush. So I'm going to lock that in right there, 28.78, and then I'm just going to move this out of the way for a moment. There we go. And then I'm going to turn my other light on. So hopefully, yeah, we look like we can still see. You got a reflection, but not much I can do for that, unfortunately. So I'm just going to bring my fence. So I'm just finding a tooth that's on that side, laying it up with there. I got that. Let's get this out of the way. That looks pretty good. I just rather be on the There we go. We got like half a millimeter overlap. So I'm just going to double check again that measurement. And then touch and touch and that. So my blade is going to fall just shy of that edge. So put 
caliper away. And then we'll pull that back. Make sure that's nice and tight. Lights on. So I stopped right at that line where I want the, the edge of the blade to be. So this should never go past this point. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to put our slide on there so that way it keeps it aligned all the time. That right now is too big though. So what I'm going to do, once that's done, Okay, pull that out. I'm gonna take this piece so I know, like this, I have almost no wiggle. This is a piece I've made in the past before, and the way I did it is just on the table saw. Um, I trimmed it, and I kind of went a little bit large, came over, test fitted it. And then I barely, I just snuck up. It probably took me 10 passes where sometimes I didn't even feel like I was cutting anything off, but I was until I got to the point where I can get over here and it does not wiggle side to side at all. And see if it's a little bit skewed, it's tight. So I'm gonna take my pencil, it's just stuck in the groove. And I don't want it to be the full depth. I actually just want it to be, you know, I want it to be a little bit shy at the bottom. So I'm gonna make a mark here. And I'm gonna set that up so I cut on the inside of the mark. So my strip is gonna be a little bit, basically the blade thickness short. of being the full height of where the slide rail is here. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna cut this whole thing. this piece so I'm gonna set it put it back in its home so I don't lose it there we go all right so now when I put this piece in here it sits below that surface and the way I'm gonna attach that I'm gonna use usually four dimes is all that I need. Four dimes, double stick tape, and my razor blade. Now it's not permanently attached with the double stick tape. That is just to get it so it's stuck to this board when I put everything together. I'm just gonna peel off a section of the double stick tape and I had my scissors. So I'm just gonna cut that off. Don't need that. I'm gonna set a piece. Just up here. Okay, done with that. I'm just gonna grab a piece of scrap here. Set it upside down and with my razor blade just cut that little piece off because I'm going to use it down further. There we go. And right there. Now I like to use my weeding tool 
for my Cricut to do this, but if you have a decent razor blade, you can use that as well, just to peel it back. Weeding tool works wonders though. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna stick it right here. Oh, whoops, sorry. Don't wanna do that yet. I'm gonna take the dimes. I like to do face up on all sides, just to be safe. Set two of them there, and they are stacked. Two of them here. Take those, put those back in the channel. Bring my guard back up. If you don't have a guard, you can just use a... Uh, oops. You can use a straight edge and just clamp it down. There we go. So I'm just gonna bring that up so it goes level and just push that down. There we go. Slide that back out. There's two of our dimes. There's the other two dimes, and this is attached temporarily. So now I want to attach that permanently, or semi-permanently. So I'm going to use my countersink and a couple one-inch screws. And by a couple, I'm going to do four of them. Okay, there's the four screws. Got my drill. This bottom piece, so right now I'm just gonna do four little drill holes just to get everything in there. I don't need to go, uh, that might go all the way through. So what I'm gonna do, just till it hits the deck. The reason why I'm gonna do that is this is not gonna go through the cast iron, but I just want, That should be good. You don't want to put a hole where you're going to have your pivot points or a screw where you're going to have your pivot points or else they're going to just interfere with each other. Okay, there's that. So now we have our four holes lined up. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of a countersink to these just to get the head. So I'm gonna do the middle. If I need to tighten those down more, I will, so that way they're not sitting at all because that does feel a little bit high. That's good. need to do this just a tiny bit more. But, should be able to take that. Now we have our rail. I'm gonna run this again. The reason why I did that is I don't want to have the piece in there turn it on and have it rubbing on the wood. It can actually ruin your blade by de-offsetting the blade teeth, or at least one side of them. So this way I know we're good now. So I'm gonna line this up here and I need to find a good suitable edge to keep me from going too far every time. So I'm just gonna cut a strip of this Another strip of pine here to do that. So I'm gonna pull this out. See how much easier that just came out as well. 
So that piece is gonna sit, I only need it to go, you know, a good was that, you know, you know, five inches or so. And I don't need it to be too deep. So let's put that five inches. That's actually at five inches right there. But it was at five inches. Now it's back at five inches. There we go. All right. Take you. Stop right there. Grab the clamp. I just want to make sure this isn't moving when I do this this part. Helps if we're facing the same way too. So that's gonna stay there now. So I'm gonna go get some double stick tape again, and that's gonna go on the back side here, and then I'm gonna place it underneath, and you'll see how that goes once that one's done, and then I'll use another like two two screws for that one. And for the piece of double stick, it does not need to be as large. So I'm just gonna cut. There's a little tiny piece here. And there we go. That, so I'm gonna take it underneath. I have my the table sitting like this. I'm going to take it like this and then bring it up like that, but I'm going to leave it so it's a little bit below the board and then bring it up so it's touching. One, two, and push. So this one I have to lift up so it'll clear my rail. And then we're going to drill again. So this time we're just gonna do two of them. I'm just gonna test this one more time. There we go. So it stops right where I want it to stop every single time. So now we're gonna move over to the drill press and we're gonna drill those out here. So see you at the drill press. All right, so we're over here at the drill press now, and one thing that's gonna get in the way is this rail. And the reason being is I need to, starting right here, it's already in the way. If I turn it around, it's in the way. I cannot get my board back in as far as I need either direction to be able to drill these holes out. So now with the, we have these four screw, screw locations in here, we're going to actually take these back out. Okay, screws are out. And we're going to take this rail off. Oh, double stick tape. Do not want to stick there. It's stuck over here, so we need to take that off. And for those that are interested, this is the Scotch carpet tape. Nice and strong. I can go push right here. Quarter inch bit. Just gonna line up my holes. Kind of press it in there and you can see where it's gonna cut. This for my original one is about where I stopped. Um, I had my stops and I had my holes and then I made the little block that fit on there. So I'm gonna clean this up and then we'll get started on the next part on the clamp. My bad, forgot. We need to actually 
with the pine, I'm gonna put the coverings on the sides and on this rail, and this will have to get, when I put the nether pine on there, this will get recut. And we'll do that next, and then we'll start working on the clamping piece. So, all right. All right, so I got my measuring tape here. I got a piece of paper. It has a template for, some, for one of the future parts, but it has blank, enough blank area that I can take some notes on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw our basic shape here. So we're gonna have, because I know the dimensions here, I don't know the surrounding dimensions. So we're gonna have a rectangle, I think, a smaller strip, another rectangle, and then let's go strip this way. So, if you guys haven't seen one of these, it is just a flat back um, tape measure. It's from Fast Cap. Um, I love it. It's it sucks because yeah, it doesn't stay upright. Yay! Um, but it works great for when you're marking. And why I say it works great for when you're marking is, let's get this back a little bit. It actually is right next to your piece. They have um, they have many, many different variants um, and I am not being paid or anything to say this. There might be other ones that have flat back as well. So take your pick. Um, but I just like it because it's it nice and close. I don't have to rotate my tape measure or anything like that to get nice accurate measurements. All right, so it looks like we are okay, I'm gonna go on the high side. I'm gonna go seven and three quarter because I'll trim it off of the edges. So from here to here, that's seven and three quarter inches. Check in a couple spots just to make sure I don't. Yep, so that'll be okay. I want to check the other side. So this one, 9 and a 16th. Yep. Another thing I just picked up a couple days ago with these Bic Velocity pencils, uh, this is .07 but they have a nice small movement. Instead of doing almost a mill full millimeter of lead, or like almost two millimeters of lead, it does like a millimeter each click. So I have not broken the lead on this yet. And they have fat ones for people like myself. Um, and they have skinnier ones as well, and they all work just wonderfully. Again, not paid for motion. All right, so 9 sixteenths. So that, we're looking at 12 and an eighth, 12 and an eighth, and eighth inches, okay. This bottom one, do one and a half, one and a half. The reason why I'm not being too picky on my measurements, because when I place them all down, I'm actually gonna line them up to my template and then trim off the extra later on. But I said it was one and a half. One and a half, one and a half, yep. Okay, and then the last one, we got two and three eighths, two and three eighths, two, three 
right. So we got that. Got my height, got my height. Oh, my width is 40. 80. I almost did it again. Uh, 80 millimeters. Which is the same as. So go three and an eighth. So, with all that, I have all the information I need to be able to cut out my pieces. So, let me set up over at the table saw and we'll get those cut out. All right, now we're over here at the bend saw. I have my pine, I have my tape measure, pine, tape measure, pen, pencil, and our board. So, see we got 12 and an eighth, and I believe my board is not long enough for that. I believe this is only about 11 inches. Yep, 11 inches. So, I can't do that one, but if I take, if I cut this, so 12 in that, seven and nine, so that's not gonna work. So let's see what we get out of this here. So I'm gonna cut this one, oops. Set it up for 12 and an eighth. Remove, sorry for the camera shake. Go. Okay, let's get that out. So I want twelve. And an eighth. eyeballing it. There we go. Okay. 12 and an eighth. Safety glasses. Here we go. Let's turn this out of the way for the minute. And then our next measurement, seven and three quarters. So this is 12 and eight, so I need to keep that. So now I need, let's go this side. Seven and three quarters. So that's way over there. So this extra piece I'm gonna use probably for the top and the bottom. So this should fit on the left hand side of our board. Let me grab that real quick. So here's our board. So this is going to cover, it'll come up right up to this line, just like that, and go there. This piece is th just perfectly thick enough. Really? Wow. Check this out. It needed 80 millimeters. 80 millimeters. Oh, down here. 80 millimeters. Look at that. Awesome. So, that means for those, I need that out of the way. Excuse me, uh, one and a half inches. Yeah. 
Okay, we'll cut that one. That one and a half is gonna go on the bottom. side was two and three eighths. And there's that. So we get the tape measure out of the way. Saw on. side. So now I just need the remainder piece. So that is nine sixteenths width by the twelve and an eighth again. So I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. We'll leave that there. I just, I'm going to need the room. All right. So we get this piece back. Again, do a nice long one. So that was 12 and an eighth. All right. And we want nine and one sixteenth. So nine and one sixteenth. So it's almost the entire doodad. back knock over Bessie clamp I got a perfect little box right there okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and Glue does not stick to this very well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my sander, I'm gonna sand this, and then I'll go glue and clamp that down, and then to keep that in place, I'm gonna use probably a couple, uh, a couple clamps, and then I'm gonna nail it with some small finishing nails. So this piece of wood, we're going to, need to cut this circle out, and that's going to be the base for our clamp. So that one we're going to end up doing over at the bandsaw. So that'll be quick and easy. I'm not going to use the circle jig because this is smaller than the one that I already had. So I'm just going to cut not going to use that piece. I'm going to use that. Let's cut that. 
And I just need my purple glue stick. Okay. So let's glue this on here. Da 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 da. This is how fast stuff dries here. So let's go like that. Okay. All right, so we're back at the bandsaw. Just cut our base out. There's our circle. Put that in the garbage. So this one, I really only need that circle. This is where the front clamp and the pivot point is gonna, or front part of the clamp is gonna be. So I'm just gonna move over here to the drill press, which is just to my right. And do that real quick off the camera. Okay. There, I have a circle all the way through. For my pivot, I'm just gonna use a dowel, quarter inch dowel. Okay. So off camera, I just tested really quick. That I could put that in and hit all the slots. I was able to. The cl one closest to the blade was a little bit tight. So after I sand this down just a little bit, should be just fine. Plus once the block and everything is on top, it'll move a lot easier. All right, so now I need to find a piece of wood that I can use for the top block. A piece off of here. Good. Okay. So it doesn't even need to be just looking at the grain. I want to see how the grain goes and that kind of stuff is going down, so that'll be okay should be long enough. It's not gonna snap or anything. So I'm gonna go right. So. Eighty. I want my wood to cut. Right there. I'm just using calipers and I'm using that to mark where I want it. And then height. Right there. go. Out of the way and off. Okay, I only need to go down to this line. Right here, you can't see it very well. Microphone was off. Um, so now we need to put cut this out and put that on there so we can cut that. Those channels. So let's get the edge. 
edge. Will be edge. Will be edge. Edge. A little bit in the middle. Yay. Three blue stick. Boo. Alright. Okay. That. Down to that there. 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 And that's what we need to remove. I need to remove that. Go. That might still be wet enough. Yep. Came right off. There's that. Since we're still at the bandsaw, might as well make the arms. Now for the arms, I'm gonna use a little bit denser wood because it's gonna have some for some force pushing down on them. I don't want them to break. So for that, I'm hoping this piece of cherry will work. If I need to do it in multiple pieces, I can. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to do a couple pieces here because it's wide enough this way. And then I can make two of those and one block and I can, can attach that. So, I need at get my calipers. What did I say that was two? Yeah. Two centimeters thick. I will use this side. that. So that, I believe, is 30, I said. All right. All right. Oh, I made that. 60. <laughs> okay. Side of my mark I just made. Okay, so there's our arm. It's gonna come down. So now I need to cut two of those. And I can make them. Start with 90, make them a little bit longer. We can always cut it down. Okay. make my arms there, but that's not quite thick enough. But if I sand this down, actually that'll fit. So you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Get this out of the way. Just looking to see which way I want 
that to go. Okay. That way. And that way. This cut I'm making right now will make them so they fit. As you can tell, I am doing this on the fly, so. so that just barely fits in there. So I want to cut these now so they're about a centimeter thick. Let's turn this off. You know what? I'm going to do a 15 millimeter, so a centimeter and a half, just for extra strength. Plus, I have plenty here that I'll be able to do that with. Those that way. Okay. down. So that one, like that. And that'll be able to bite down. This one will just sit in here and just have its teeth on the bottom side right here. So, next. Got this. Okay, so got this printed out a couple times. And the reason why is these pivot holes. So this is gonna sit right here, and it'll end up getting rounded out and whatnot. So it's actually quite a bit thicker than what I need. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut that down right now. Don't want to lose those. So that thickness, what is this? Should be 45? Yep, 45 millimeters. The other way. Good. I actually printed this out twice. Because the first one, I'm going to cut this piece out. And 
than that, it's going to be for marking my holes. Recycle, recycle. Yes, I sing and talk to myself quite frequently out here. Get so used to having, you know, three kids at home. And your wife, and they all love to chat. And by chat, I mean talk your ears off. It's okay. up because that seems off. That is because that is not the right measurement. I bet that's at five millimeters. Hey, it is. We're going to go 10. That's where that needs to be. There we go. And I'm going to go over here to the drill. So I'm going to bring all these pieces back for a moment. And now I'm going to drill these two holes. all the way through. So I'm going to leave these as is for right now. I'm going to glue these up like this. Because that goes there. That goes there. That sets in there. That goes there. And I can drill from that side and get my holes. Actually, I have a scrap. Do I have enough room? Let's see here. And these arms are actually way long, so I could even have them so they come out to grab as well, which I think I'm going to do that. I like that idea better. So I'm going to take that hole and up. Making the same. this I'm actually gonna find a pencil really quick because I want to mark the front so that way I just remember Go. so I know this is this will be the side that the blocks that I'm cutting butt up against all right, so we got our two pieces here. That's cut, that's cut. That lines up. So I'm gonna glue that on there. And then we're almost there. So let me glue that up and then I'll be right back in an instant. All right, so the other piece is drying. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit, 
scraping up the bottom and it doesn't matter where that is on there. Oh, I'm gonna go with this with the rag really quick. All right, so, yeah, besides it's clean. So this is gonna sit like that. And then this is gonna get clamped down here. How are we gonna clamp that down? Well, easy. Easy, 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 easy. Using some quarter by 20. I believe these are two and a half, three inch, three inch bolts. A few accordion, a couple nuts, grabbing a couple washers, and then the inserts that will allow us to hold that in place. So we got our inserts here, our bolts, just grab some washers, and three nuts. So to get these two going, in, we need to actually drill this out a little bit more. And for these ones, I use a 3 8 bit. And then I'm gonna bore those down about an inch on both sides. That way, we'll set about well, they'll be able to go all the way down if they need to, because those fit right in there. You know what, actually, I'm gonna bore those down just enough, half an inch, so those just fit in there, maybe a tiny bit more. So I'm gonna do that over on the drill press. Okay, so that's now drilled out. The easiest way I found to install these is to put it on your bolt with your bolt going all the way through, sticking out the other side. Grab your handy dandy hammer wherever you left it. There, I left it. So you put the bolt all the way through so it sticks out on the other side so it helps to line up. I'm actually gonna go away a little bit more because I want it to hit the hole on the bottom side. Plenty of room, so I'm gonna tap that down, back that out. Tap that down, back that out. Tap, 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 tap. There we go. So that's one of them done. What this does is it just locks in there and gives us a point to put the screws in. And then once this gets glued down and everything, it'll sit like that. I may even cut this dowel down a little bit so I can do a second dowel to go up into here to keep that, to help tighten that down as I glue it as well. Okay, I'm gonna do that again for the other side. There we go. So that is now in there. And that allows me on the back side I can have it as high as that but I can also screw it all the way down so all the way it'll actually come through the bottom if I needed to, down nice and low. I don't think I'll need that though. Not with the way how I have it set up. At least not yet, I hope. Okay. Now there is one problem with this, that way, as is. That goes through there, that goes through there. Just like no play whatsoever. Yeah, I can get these both in here, tighten that down, tighten that down. But it's really hard to move those pieces around. I mean, I can, but there's no play, almost no slack. So what I'm gonna do 
I'm actually going to take those out. Put the quarter inch bit back in my drill press. Oh, I got another funny angle, sorry. So I'm going to turn on the drill press. Put this through here and I'm just going to tilt it and tilt it and tilt it and tilt it. It will kind of want to twist on you. No big deal. Do it to the other side as well. So now what I've done is actually elongated the holes a little bit and then it allows the bolts to go through. They can pivot. Oh, sorry. Ah. They can pivot now and they have a little bit more slack to the sides. And that's going to be just fine because it's actually going to make it easier. So let's go ahead and bring the camera back down. Let's try this again. Bolt, bolt. Actually, on the back end, bolt, washer, nut. Way up there. This side, washer, nut. So we'll do nut. And then the washer. So those both go through. That's in. That's in. Okay. So the way how this is going to work is the back side. Probably, did. oh yeah, and the reason why I'm using the nut on the front is because this bolt cannot go all the way down. So if I need this all the way at the bottom, so let me turn that here, all the way at the bottom here, it would actually push through and we don't want that to happen. So this is why I'm using a nut here. And the same on this one, I may not be able to get the bolt all the way down through the bottom to get it low enough. So I'm using a washer or a bolt with a washer on underneath. So the underneath will kind of send up, set up what our alignment is. And then I do the top one and that's actually going to cause this to pivot down. And when it pivots down, whoops, when it pivots down, see, that's actually going to bite into our piece. And I'm actually going to take and put two very small nails that will protrude about not even a millimeter and that's what's going to bite into the piece and keep it from moving. It's also going to be on the bottom side I want to do the same thing, two of them on there to bite so that way it grabs that piece and as I turn it it's not going to come loose unless I really reef on it. So this point I need to put the nails in there and glue this so let's take this back out so with that so actually I want oh I did this the other day, the other day too I pushed the that in there all I have to do once it hits it and keep turning and it's just going to push it right on out so I can grab it there's that there's that Put this away the tiny nails I'm going to use use my smallest bit in this set Which is 
just that bit right there. So we got that. That goes through. And we're gonna have okay, right there. And there. Just did that quick quick ones for marking. Pull that up. Get a back piece. We're actually gonna just drill those through. Those are both through. Now on the top piece, just make sure it gets the right side. Yep. Same thing. small they're actually came in a set that I had for hanging pictures and they're 17 gauge galvanized nails so I need four of them I only grabbed two actually six but that needs to dry some more. So we'll finish this one. So now I wish I had, could use a smaller um, a smaller drill bit, but I don't have one. And these nails are actually a little bit long for that bottom piece. So that means they're going to be way long for the top piece as well. But that's fine. So what I'm going to do is going to push it back. Actually, take them back out. Need some super glue. Go from the top side. Oops, ran that all the way through. I'm just pushing up to the hole and let it so it just bleeds through and take these and push them so they just barely protrude on the other side like I said I only want them to protrude about well, half a millimeter I don't want them biting into the wood so much that I can't get it back out You could try using a nail or something else like that if you wanted to. And I've glued my finger. There we go. Clean it up. Okay, that's not going anywhere on that one. So the top side, I'm not too worried about trimming that out. The bottom side, though. I am a little bit more. But all I need to use is a pair of cutters and then it'll cut that down. If it's a little if it grabs a little bit, it'll cut in a groove into the bottom piece of the board. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Super glue up to the hole. Squeeze, 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 squeeze until it just came out the other side. That way I know the whole channel has glue in it. Push it through till it just barely protrudes. Just barely protrudes. That one's already locked in. Okay. 
don't even know. It's just barely, barely, barely sticking out there. Okay, so I'm gonna get my cutters. Just diagonal cutters, nothing special. Eye protection. Because this will send pieces flying. There we go. I could touch that on my grinder really quick just to bump those down. Um, or a file. But I don't know where that is right now. So next, don't need that. I'm going to Da, 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 da. Just had to wait, I'm gonna grab one more dough. Some tools and stuff away. Da, 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 da. So we're just about done. Dowel. Just a little tiny piece of dowel. And these are actually dowel pins that I'm cutting. And so this one, what I want to do is I want it so it sticks out about as far as it is. So, oops, a little over a quarter inch. But I want room for a pin on the other side to stick in there as well so I can glue it all together. So I'm just going to cut this off right there. Quick, simple, easy. Wrong side. So that's gonna go in there and sit just like that. Wrong side again, holy moly. And it's gonna sit like that. I just need to add some glue. And for this one, I wanna use wood glue, but I'm gonna glue both pieces together all at the same time. So I'll do that, and once that's dry, I'll be back. All right, so this time I'm actually gonna record what I'm doing. So what I've done, I took the other block. I've got the first block, is done. The clamp parts are glued up and those are drying. And I took the bottom of the main plate and I glued on the track and the stop. So that's sitting there. But on here I was doing this a little bit different than the other one where I went all the way through. I drilled a hole a little bit ways down into it and then I just put the nails in there. And then so I'm just hitting it some with the activator and just make sure that super glue is nice and dry and cured. I'm gonna take my diagonal cutters and put my glasses on. So I got my diagonal cutters and I'm just gonna cut that just a little bit high. That way it has a nice little spot where it's gonna be able to bite. Same with this one. There. So now I got two little teeth to where it's going to bite. Um, it's probably going to be, well, let the glue dry overnight. So I will see you tomorrow in an instant. All right, so it's now the next day and happy 4th of July to everybody in the US. Um, everything is dried up. I did sand this for just to make sure this is nice and smooth, nice transitions and whatnot. I've also done a little bit of sanding. It's going to need a little bit more around the circle just to make sure it spins nice and freely. It has a couple spots where it is binding up just a little bit. Like right in there, I can feel one, but I can still turn around. So let me show you what how the bolts are. And then I'll show you how to use it. Oh, I'm thinking about it. 
on the under, un, underside here. I have glued this and I removed the screws. It's not going anywhere. Um, the stop rail, that's also been glued, but that one, I'm not worried about the screws poking through or anything like that. When I was gluing this all together, um, I used actually two dowels. One of them I cut short, and then the other one I left long that joined the one that joins the two, I left long, and then I cut this bottom one short, but I made sure it went through at least halfway. So it is actually sitting, you know, halfway through this three quarter inch piece here. So I'm using two uh, quarter by 20, uh, what are these? I think they're three inch bolts. Where is... Yeah, these are three inch quarter by 20 bolts. So I need two of them. I need one for the front and one for the back. The one for the back, I put the bolt through and then I put a washer and a nut. The one in the front, I put a bolt, take the bolt, a nut, and the washer, and it actually sits on the top side. So the way this is gonna work is this back one pushes up on the wood, so this is as far down as it should go. The other one is gonna pull down into it, and by doing that, it's gonna cause the action to make it lock and in, bite into the other piece of wood. I was thinking about it last night and could possibly get away with just putting pads of sandpaper, glue in some pads of sandpaper instead of using the teeth. So I may try that at a later time and just update as well if that works. Because um, then you wouldn't have the little teeth to have to worry about um, sending out or steaming out. Um, again, those teeth are only, you know, a millimeter in height, so they're barely going to protrude. But, you never know. So we're going to do our first test on a rainbow here. Um, so I've got a blank just about ready. I do need to move a couple things, and I need to get my entry into here as well. Just need to remove my go. Get that out of the way. Get this out of the way. test fit this back on here yet so I don't even know if I need to sand that rail down looks good so far turn this off. It's very tight. All right. So that is on this bottom end. And the reason why it's doing that is it did split on me a little bit, kind of over tightened the, the screw and caused a split. And I can see where it's eating away here. So I'm just gonna use a chisel after I turn it so it's not pointing at myself. Bad things happen when you do that. So 
So I'm just cutting a little bit away. I was hoping it wasn't going to be so much, it almost kind of would lock it in place, but it wasn't doing that. So, great thing about wood, I can change it. So let's give this a try. Oh, still still really tight. So I'm gonna take some away on the other side. Let's just go. This board's gonna be heavy enough. It's gonna stay down. So I'm not worried about it hopping up and whatnot. I mean, it's got a couple, three, four pounds to it. Nah, not that much actually. There you go. out of the way and I'm gonna pull that back and I need to get that in I can hear it how it's kind of rubbing on the blade and if I keep doing this after about five ten minutes that blade will be ruined so what I'm gonna do just kind of freehand it open this up just a hair sitting in that track. I don't want to hear it. There we go. So this is in place. If I did want to clamp it, this back side right here is going to be the best place to clamp on the opposite side. But like I said, this is sitting and it's got a little bit of wobble so I could shim it. But I'm not really that worried about it. I've got the clamp here. There's the guard. Bring that back down in a minute. So that's gonna be the same as yesterday, or the other day, last weekend actually now, when I'm measuring this, I need to make sure I'm putting the middle on the middle. And because of where I've cut that, I just need the middle of what I want to cut here for the rainbow. Got a yet so we got three and three eighths so one and a half that's our middle that's our middle have a rough idea where the middle is here. Okay. On here. I want that same. 
I marked the wrong side. <laughs> Set this in the first spot here. Bring that back. Kind of lift it up, line it up, and then drop. Because remember, there's teeth on the bottom that are going to bite into it as well. And teeth on the top. So my back actually needs to come down just a little bit. So I can just do that with my thumb and my finger here. And this front one, I'm going to use a 7 16 and then that is going to be pulling down. So it's got the back, it's pulling down, and the front, right? There we go. We don't need to super tighten it or anything. But now, that's clamped in there. It's not going anywhere. So I'm just going to do a quick test. That's on the line. That is not on the line. So that means all my measurements on the other pieces are off a little bit. But that's enough that when I sand it, it will actually come out. So we're okay. So let's give this guy a whirl and see what happens. And as I finish each one, all I have to do is just kind of lift it up a little bit and slide it forward to the next one. Here, that's the next one. So, like that, and then like that, and then like that, and there we go. So let's do this. about the right measurement and we cut the next one So I'm going to go ahead and just finish these ones up on this one. And next up, I want to make a semicircle. So now this is the first time cut, and it's actually cut some of these corners down. So that's okay. May even cut down on the arm a little bit, but it doesn't look like it. And I'm going to go ahead and carry this all the way around because I want to fully trim off all of these pieces here. Let's 
So now you can see how it rounded the edges here as I made my full close to circle. Just fine, it's no big deal. So we just loosen that up, pop that up. Uh, I don't know if we can see them here. But there is a little dimple right there. Yeah, there's one, there's one. There's one, and that is actually the deepest one, but I can either steam it, like I said, or sand it out. So these pieces are thick. So as I'm sanding everything, that should come out. So there is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 segment rainbow. So let me prep up some plywood here. I'm gonna use some Baltic birch plywood and a quarter inch. So that means we're gonna to need to use the smaller arm or the lar larger arm that will grab all the way down to the base and we'll continue from there. So I'll be back in a minute right away. Okay, so I've gone through and marked out on some quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. Took the uh, rainbows and drew rough sizes on there so I could place them out and everything. Marked the middles of uh, where the pivot point is gonna match up. And then I just roughly cut them out. As you can see, there's not one semicircle in this bunch. Um, going forward, I may actually figure out like squares and rectangles that I can cut so I can batch cut them really quick to make these faster than doing it this way because honestly in this there's probably quite a bit of waste so i'm going to start let's i'm going to move my pile over here i'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up so i'm going to start with the largest one go to the smallest one to set up the jig to set up the jig for doing the smaller pieces since this won't reach I mean, the lowest it will go is down to this mark. I need this one that will actually be able to grab those quarter inch pieces. So I just remove both bolts. And you could use a socket. It'd probably speed this up a little bit. I'm just using my fingers. So there's that one out. This one I do have to pull. And this is the back one. Pull the nut off, washer off, bolt out to the other one. Oh, this one, yesterday I didn't do the elongate the holes. Let me do that really quick. So I remember all I did is I took the drill bit, stuck it through, and then just, I just rock it back and forth, and it allows me to make the bolts also do the same action. Okay. So I'm gonna set that down, the back one through, washer, nut. This one I'm gonna leave lower, but I need it to be enough that I can thread it in. There we go, so that's gonna come down. So I actually need it even lower than that. So let me just screw this in some more. That's gonna be close. I can do a little bit more. Oops. You could even, if you need it to bottom out, you could not put the washer on there. Or you can also use a larger bit or a Forstner bit and make that hole bigger so you can countersink the nut into there a little bit. Um, the other thing too, this will do, because it can pivot, it can actually kind of pivot down into the piece. So I'm gonna take this one and get that in there. There we go. Get that down where it's just about where it needs to be. So that should be enough that I can get my work, my pieces in there to cut. So I got that. I have my little mark right there in the middle. And I did not draw my mark on there not far enough. Let me do that real quick. I need a pencil again. So 
now we know. Put that mark all the way down. So, there we go. All right, so now, get the largest one. I'm just gonna set that all the way back in there. are fogging up. It got nice and humid yesterday here in Arizona. So, so go like that. Let's bring that down. Snug it. And honestly, I don't want it to bite into their super bad. I just want to be able to use this as my pivot. So that should be good. I'm gonna lower this down for right now. When I get to the closer pieces, I'll need to raise it up. So clear the jig. But for a little bit, I'll be good here. So let's cut this one. itself has marks as big just naturally. So there's one. So again, I'm put this in. This one I may end up recutting. It's got some scuffing on the wood, but and this is actually for a customer who has been patiently waiting so I can make the jig and everything. Oh, yeah, gotta move it up one. That's right, it wasn't fitting right. So we hit, and we're good. All right, good, so I'm gonna tighten that down a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna cut this one. I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting those and we'll just fast forward through that for you because I'm pretty sure you don't wanna watch. So here we go. circle. So just a little bit of light sanding, get rid of the pencil marks. Um, and I think we're good. All right, so we have our rainbow stacker and we also have our semi-circle parts and they fit up quite nicely. They do still need to be sanded though and whatnot. We also have our jig now. So you can definitely clean this up if you want to, but I probably won't or anything like that. I mean, there's really no reason. Just gotta keep the dust out of it every once in a while. We have our clamping system. Um, may go through some different, uh, see if there's other ways I can clamp to, like maybe using sandpaper instead of the nails. That way it doesn't uh, leave any marks if I can get enough pressure with that easily. That's the key part. I wanna make it easy to grab onto the piece and release the piece, maybe a toggle clamp or something like that. So, hope you enjoyed your time and you have a wonderful holiday for those that are enjoying, or ha actually by the time this comes out, holiday's gonna be over. So I hope you had a wonderful holiday and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.